Hey guys, Goat Mumbler here with Mr. Bill, of course. Thanks for checking in. Today I thought we'd put together our own personalized survival fishing kit. Now you've seen a lot of these where people put them in Altoids tins and stuff like that, and that's cool. But I've got all these other different types of containers and thought I'd experiment and figure out which one I like the best. Now the first thing that's important is you have to determine what region do you think you're going to be in. For instance, here in the great state of Texas, uh, we don't have a lot of streams and rivers where people are going to be fishing for trout and salmon. So I'm not going to build a kit with tackle in it uh, specific to trout and salmon. Around here, it's going to be more of uh, bass, crappie, catfish, perch, things like that. So with that in mind, you can start building your kit around the type of animals you're going to be looking for. Now, a good place to start is at your big box store or anybody that sells fish and tackle. And they're going to carry a, uh, a manufacturer called Eagle Claw. And Eagle Claw has been building fish and tackle since God was a boy. And they put out a basic little fishing kit. comes in this box right here. It's pretty small. You can see here compared to an Altoids tin, it's not just huge. But they put together a little kit in this box. And it's going to be species specific. For instance, uh, they're going to have one for uh, catfish. There's going to be one for bass. There's going to be one for crappie. And the difference is inside that tackle box is going to be the type of hooks you have, the type of sinkers you have, lures, things like that. I picked the one for crappie. And uh, the reason I did that is because I had the variety of hooks that I wanted and it had a, a, a float in it and some things like that. So for $4.95, you can start with a little uh, Eagle Claw kit like this. I wish I'd kept the label on it so you could see what I'm talking about, but just remember Eagle Claw, and it's going to be in virtually every big box store you go to. Walmart, $4.95 or $0.97. Cents. So let's get started. What I decided to do instead of using one of these tins, which is not a bad idea, uh, it's just that everybody does this Altoids thing, and that's okay. I want to do something different. But if you really want to get thin and small, now here's an old uh, Victorinox box, and it's really slim. Problem is, what I don't like about it, it's a good high quality tin, but it's not hinged. Um, and here's one I got in a Coleman so-called personal survival kit. It's, it's, it's really too big. Here's one I got on a, our trip to Italy. I think a corkscrew came in that. It was kind of cool. I've got all this kind of crap laying around here. I've got a variety of these little small boxes, too. Uh, this one's a little too big. Plano makes this. Of course, they make tackle boxes. This is the Eagle Claw one, and this is one I picked up at Gander Mountain, and the name of the company here is Flambeau. Uh, the difference, uh, the size is, is virtually the same. This might be a tad taller. But what I liked about it, it had a little better hinge on the front or a latch on the front and the hinges in the back are a little better but it has these dividers here in the compartments so you can kind of do what you want with those uh, you can do the same thing with the Eagle Claw here that you get from Walmart you can take an X-Acto knife and if you need a larger compartment you cut it out no biggie so what I did first thing you're gonna need to uh, like I say decide what type of fish you're gonna be fishing for and start building your tackle around that uh, let's put some sinkers in here. You gotta remember, if you add a bunch of sinkers, you're gonna add a bunch of weight, so get the type that you think you're gonna need. Make sure you have half a dozen or so. Chances are you're gonna lose some of this stuff. There's gonna be some swivels. You can use those swivels for other things too. Uh, most important too, you're gonna need some fishing line. And this happens to be a 20 pound test for a couple reasons. Number one is A, I had it, and B, uh, you can also use that for to make snares. 10 or 12 pound will probably work just fine too, but uh, that just happened to be what I had, so that's what I threw in here. Some other corded too here, some other uh, 135 pound nylon line. Uh, probably get as much as you can cram in your kit. You can never have too much cordage. The other thing is I started uh, putting together a, a variety of little small lures and stuff. Some of these little jigs and stuff, they work real good around Texas threw those in there. Okay, and then you got your hooks. And 
and get a variety of hooks too. Get some small ones because you might be you might be fishing for bait uh, to catch bigger fish. So get a variety of hooks. Uh, if you think you might need some treble hooks, no reason not to throw uh, you know a couple treble hooks in there. They don't weigh anything. Here's my little float. Get that in there if I want to fish for some crappie or something. A uh, little cutting device. This just happens to be a cheap knockoff. Some swag from Linux Air Conditioning, Chinese version, but it does have scissors in it, which I like because when you tie off your your uh, lures and so forth, you're going to have some excess line. You want to be able to trim that off. So there you are, a small kit. That's mine. Not a big deal. I don't have any Ranger bands, but just put some rubber bands around it. Last thing you want to do is. Open up your backpack and your double throwdown survival kit. Fishing kit is all over and you got hooks everywhere. You're stabbing yourself. Just not a whole lot of fun. So there you got it, guys. Build one for you. They're a lot of fun. You can put it in the small Altoids tin or you can put it in this one. Whatever floats your boat. But it's all about the fun. So you go out and get you one together. So I got to run. Till next time, be safe, be aware, be prepared. Adios.